going to discuss another spreadsheet here that uses um, both uh, uh, logical statements in Excel and it uses conditional formatting. Uh, it's a little bit more elaborate example than uh, the previous one that I discussed. And it's uh, based on a, on a game called Carnival Dice. And uh, the, the results of this game are a bit counterintuitive, which is what makes it so interesting. Let me explain how the game is played. Okay, to, to begin, we say we have three dice, uh, six-sided, six-sided dice. Each one has three numbers on it. Each number appears twice. So we have three numbers appearing twice on a six-sided dice. The red dice, I'll say, has numbers one, five, and nine. The blue dice has numbers two, six, and seven. And the green dice has numbers three, four, and eight. So the question is um, uh, something like this. You pick a dice you want to use, red, green, or blue and a carnival uh, stand operator, based on the dice that you pick, he picks one of the other two dice. And then you start playing a game where you each roll your dice and see who has the highest number. And the highest number wins. So presumably you're betting money on this. So um, you win or lose money depending on how your dice rolls. Now, the, the trick here is that even though you can pick any dice that you want, the game is fixed. It's in the favor of the operator in that he has significantly better odds of winning. So let's, uh, let's investigate why that's true. Okay, let's examine first the red dice. Now what I want to do is in Excel I want to simulate rolling the dice and I do this in a fashion similar to the way in a previous video I simulated flipping a coin to get heads or tails. So here's what I do with the rolling the dice simulation. I compute three times a random number. This is a uniformly distributed random number going from 0 to 1. So 3 times that ends up being uniformly distributed from 0 to 3. So I can get any number somewhere in between 0 and 3 as a result of 3 times the random. And um, then I do the integer of that result. So for example, if the number that I get is 1.5, the integer then just takes the integer part of that number, throws away the fraction part. So the integer part of 1.5 is 1. The integer part of 0.75 is 0. The integer part of 2.3 is 2. And we're never going to get a number 3 or higher. So when we do the integer part of 3 times of the random, the number, the answer we're going to get is going to be either 0, 1, or 2. And you can see those results right here. So, for example, here the number is 2. This is the integer part of 3 times rand, random number generator. Now notice that the random number, number generator is written in capital letters. Here I wrote it in lowercase, but this was not a operating function. I just wrote this as a text description of what's happening here. So we do the integer part of three times rand, we get two. So this would have been a number two point something or another. Zero, when we do the integer part, means that we have a number that's simply a fraction between zero and one. And one means we have a number that's one point something or another. We do the integer part, we just get one. So when we do this integer part three times random, we're getting these integers, 0, 1, and 2. Now the integers I actually want 
are 1, 5, and 9. So we have to create a function that uh, gives us 1, 5, or 9 based on 0, 1, or 2. Now, to do that, we, we do that with a series of nested if statements. So this explains how we do that. I look at this number, this will be a, uh, I say a2, but actually it's a3, so let me fix that. But this is not a a3, let's say, I could have left it as a2 because this is the second row. Maybe I'll do that, maybe I'll just leave it there. Okay, so I look at whatever value gets produced here. That's the value appearing in A2. If, if A2 is less than 1, the output is 1. Okay, I'm sorry, here, here, this one. So if A2 is less than 1, the output is 1. Otherwise, if we execute this if statement, so if, the op so if A2 is not less than 1, that means it's greater than 1 and less than 3, we have another if statement that executes. And we look at A2 there. If the value of A2 is less than 2, we generate a 5. If it's not less than 2, we generate a 9. So this set of nested if statements, what happens is that if we generate a number, that is between 0, um, if this number is 0, the result is the output of this nest set of nested if statements is 1. If the, the number is 1, then the result of the output is 5, and if the number is 2, the result of the output is 9. So we're going back to 3 times random, what we're doing is we're taking any numbers that are in the first third of possible values, the output is a 1. In the middle third of possible values, the output is a 5. And then the final third of possible values, the output is a 9. So by using this integer 3 times random, together with a set of nested if statements, we're then generating the numbers 1, 5, and 9 with equal probability. So that simulates the roll of the red dice. We do the blue and green dice in a similar fashion. We separately generate integer part of 3 times random number there. And we generate a whole other set of random numbers. And then we execute a set of nested if statements except in this case, the potential outputs are not 1, 5, and 9, but 2, as you see here, 2, 6, and 7. So that's what we get. If this is a 0, we get a 2. If this is a 1, we get a 6. Um, if this is a 2, we get a 7. The green dice work similarly. We again generate integer 3 times random. We have a set of nested if statements. OK, if we get a 0, we get a 3. We get um, a 1, we get a 4. And if we get um, a 2, we get an 8. So we do three independent sets of random numbers and then use Excel functions and nested if statements to generate the numbers that should be produced by the dice, each one individually. Um, then uh, what I want to do is I want to compare the numbers on the roll of each dice to determine pairwise in a competition between two dice which dice wins. Okay, now if red gets a 5 and blue gets a 2, red wins. Red gets a 9 and blue gets a 6, red wins. Nine, in fact, 9 beats everything. So, but a 1 and a 2, 1 loses to all of the blue. So let's, let's investigate that a little bit different way. And that 
Okay, we have three possible results we can get for the red dice and three possible results we can get for the blue dice. If we get a one on the roll of the red dice, every number on the blue dice wins. So there, blue wins three times. If we roll the red die and we get a five, which is getting a five is just as likely as getting a one and getting a nine is just as likely as either one of those. So if we roll and we get a five, then blue wins if it gets a six or a seven. So those are five out of six cases so far where blue wins. If we get a nine on the red dice though, blue never wins. So that means those are three more cases. So instead of five out of six, what we had a minute ago, we now have five out of nine. So um, what happens is then blue wins five out of nine times whenever we're running the red dice against the blue dice. So if I picked the red dice, the carnival operator would pick the blue dice and statistically he wins five out of nine times, a bit better than a half. In fact, by gambling Las Vegas standards, it's quite a bit better than a half. Let's look at what happens if we do the red dice versus the green dice. We roll a one on the red dice. The red dice always loses. The green dice wins three times in a row. Okay. So green dice so far is three for three. We generate a five on the red dice. Green dice loses two out of three. So now we have the green dice winning four out of six times. And if the red dice gets a nine, the green dice never wins. So when you can do the red dice versus the green dice, the red dice wins five out of, um, out of, five out of nine times. So here, the red dice is better than a half. So if I picked the green dice as my dice, the carnival operator would pick the red dice and then he would win five out of nine competitions between the two dice. Now we can do similarly, we can compare the blue dice with the green dice. So we have the green dice losing to the red dice. We have the red dice losing to the blue dice. So what do you think is going to happen between the blue dice and the green dice? Let's look at it. The blue dice rolls and gets a two. It always loses. So green wins three out of three. Blue dice gets a six. The green dice only wins if it gets an eight. So there the green dice wins, not three for three, but now four for six. And now if the, um, I'm sorry, yeah, the blue dice, so the blue dice uh, gets a seven. The seven wins these two cases. And uh, let's see if, uh, I don't know if I've, if I've gone through this correctly here. Let's see, two green wins three times. Six green wins once. And the seven green wins once. So green then uh, beats blue um, only uh, green beats blue five out of nine times. So green beats blue, blue beats red, and red beats green. So depending on which of the dice you pick, the carnival operator lets you pick your dice first and then he will pick the dice which beats your dice the majority of the time. That way, when you start rolling and betting money, the carnival operator will win as you do more and more rolls because the law of Lloyd's numbers kicks in. Okay, now notice over here, I've got, uh, uh, I've, I've got colors going down here for the red dice, the blue dice, and the green dice. Now these are not generated using conditional formatting. 
but these colors are generated with conditional formatting. Now what I've done here is I've said, okay, if we do red versus blue, who wins? So I look at the value of the red dice, look at the value of the blue dice, I say red wins. So in that case, if this number is bigger than this number, another if statement, if B3 is greater than D3, then we produce red is the output that goes into the cell. Otherwise, blue is the output that goes into the cell. Similarly here, if B3 is greater than F3, we do red and green. And over here, if D3 is greater than F3, we do blue and green. So this is what goes in these cells. This is the pairwise competition between dice to determine who wins on one-to-one -one competition between the dice. And this is we do a a bunch of of compute a bunch of simulations if you like for different rolls of the dice and we can do a statistical analysis to determine on average if we do a large number of experiments who wins now it is statistically possible that the underdog dice might win if you do a relatively small number of experiments but as you do more and more and more experiments uh, the dice that's supposed to win will win. So let's see here. And then this is what's going on right here. These computations, this part of the spreadsheet, and I'm not going to go over the details here. What I've printed over here, as I've said, that on red versus green, red wins five to four odds. Blue versus red, blue wins five to four odds. And then green versus blue, green wins five to four odds. And then we do our statistical analysis here by doing a bunch of random experiments. And we find, we, we in this particular case, red versus blue, red wins uh, 54 to 46 over blue. And red wins 66 to 34 over green and green wins 51 to uh, 49, 51 to 49 over blue. Now we can generate a whole different set of random numbers. Remember, I showed you how we can do that. We just click on a cell and type something there. And when we do that, we generate a whole new set of random experiments over here, different choices of random numbers. And then with that set, that's a, looks like it's a hundred. In that particular case, with those hundred experiments, we get 50-50. Blue and, and red win, each win 50. Here with blue, here with red versus green, it's 56 to 44. And then here with green versus blue, it's green, 55 to blue, 45. You can generate a number, another set of random values there. Here we get 56 to 44, 62 to 38, 59 to 41. So you can keep doing this experiment and, um, and see statistically uh, what might happen if you play the game 100 times. Are you going to win or lose and what are your odds? And uh, so this makes it a really interesting experiment because the way it's set up where the, the customer who's being set up to lose, he gets his first choice of dice. So he looks at all the dice, decides which one he thinks has the best chance of winning, picks it, and then it turns out that he's going to lose. So this is called Carnival Dice, and uh, it's a pretty interesting analysis here. And uh, I'm going to... Uh, to give you a chance to do some experiments um, similar to this uh, in a homework problem. Okay, that's it. Next